really excited to have you here. One of the founders, I believe, of We Funk Radio, and uh, you know, one of the great DJs in Vancouver, and uh, yes, all around great guy. Also, one of the people responsible for one of my favorite jams in the world, Vancouver Street Dance Festival. So really pleased to have you here and have you share your stories and history and and perspectives on just things in general. Yeah, yeah nice to connect, man. Um, yeah, yeah, like you said, I, I got a couple of pretty cool projects we can speak on and touch on. <laughs> uh, they're, they're pretty long term. I'm, a, yeah. I'm like, a, when, when, when I get something going, I have a tendency to stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> we folks turning 25 this year, this this fall, actually. So Wow, yeah, really? Yeah, it's a big, big uh, anniversary coming up. Yep. Wow, and yeah, I found it with my, my partner, Professor Groove. So it's a, it's pretty much a, a two-man kind of project from day one. Of course, we get we get a lot of help. Um, we, we've been blessed to have a lot of dope guests jump on. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's 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 a labor of love that 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 definitely uh, went way branched out beyond what we we first expected. Just as, as first year university students yeah, at yeah. McGill, um, just messing around, volunteering sure. at the radio station. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll definitely come back to that in a bit. But um, yeah, just first of all, what I usually get people to do is just give some background on who you are, how you got started in DJing or whatever, and yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, okay. Man, I think uh, the the starting point would be uh, 88. 88 is when I moved uh, with my family to Vancouver. And uh, yeah, that was what, like, like junior high, no elementary even. Yeah, kids were passing me tapes. At that time, I didn't even really speak like fluent English. Uh, but I, yeah, kids were passing me tapes, dub tapes. I remember like uh, Public Enemy, BDP, there's some Guns N' Roses, some Def Leppard, uh, some Run DMC, but uh, Big Daddy Kane. The, the hip hop really uh, resonated with me. But at that time, it was just uh, just syllables because I, I didn't know what they were saying. <laughs> so I would, I would mouth the lyrics, and I think that's. Um, that's to a large extent how I picked up the language. Oh, really? <laughs> um, from the lyrics, but just just uh, miming the lyrics that I didn't even know what they meant. Um, but uh, yeah, that that was the introduction. Then I got kind of deeper into the culture. Like a lot of people in Vancouver in the '80s and early '90s, the 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 most formative radio show was uh, the Crispy Biscuit Show with Kilo C on uh, CFRO. Um, yeah, everyone who listened to it loved it. it. It was there was nothing like that. Like like you got to remember to to set the context. Hip hop was not uh, just the background. Now, like it is now, right? Background is everywhere. Where, whether you're part of the culture or not, it's in the mall. It's in the drive through. Like like wh- wh- whoever you are. Uh, back then, it was like a real kind of underground thing, especially in, in a city like Vancouver. That, so that was like my, the first kind of introduction uh, to what was happening. And he, it was cool too, because Kilo had like records getting like uh, sent out from New York. He got a, a couple, con- uh, he got some connections. The host, uh, the Incredible Ease, rest in peace, was from New York City. So he kind of, um, yeah, they, they kind of represented the, the, the culture in a way that was, uh, was lit legit right from mm-hmm. as people who have a connection uh to someone like myself who was just new to it mm-hmm. um so that really yeah that just i listened to that for for years and years i remember like staying up and uh taping it on like these two hour tapes cassette tapes <laughs> and i have to flip it when the hour marks up and it's a two hour show uh cfro and uh do you still have any yeah of those similar tapes? to like I, I still have a lot of those tapes. <laughs> I haven't digitized them, but they are yeah they they're, they're pretty they're pretty amazing, uh, like a very important part of uh, kind of Vancouver hip hop history. I would say, and similar to like uh, like people taping Stretch and Bobito in um, in New York and stuff, it was just a, a time early, and well, there's a time in the culture when when when. People were just catching 
catching or, or you're getting uh, the first taste of something and, and yeah. re it really kind of picked up steam and momentum and like even up to this day i still meet people that if they were doing the same thing it was a small community we didn't we weren't connected necessarily except through the uh, the few jams when i was underage at the time um but uh the the, the impact and the, the the ripple from that show is is just immense like uh as uh, a lot of djs like myself i think uh, other vancouver djs too uh, that 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 have done a lot of really cool stuff a lot of us had that as our start, just listening to that and just uh, catching a taste of what, yeah, what like what what you can do on the turntables. Because Kilo mm -hmm. was was technically he was he was ill and uh, he had the selection too. Like I said, getting records uh, uh, mailed out, um, yeah, with a dope MC too, <laughs> and, and yeah. Mr. Bill, incredible ease with the two MCs, and that, that was a complete package. Right. So when I went to Montreal in 96, that was uh, for university. Um, yeah, I still had that kind of in the back of my mind. It's like, that, that's, that's, that's what I looked up to. That's the inspiration. And um, yeah, I started volunteering at the radio station, CKUT. Um, had you already and... started DJing at this point? Oh yeah, that's that's interesting. Like uh, I messed around <laughs> in high school. One of my one of my best friends did school dances because we couldn't play anywhere else, right? Right. Uh, we we were underage. Um, yeah, I remember. Wow, just man, just trying to do doubles of like mob deep and stuff, like uh, just in a void because it, it it wasn't like we're in the in the community. Like uh, I was, I would reverse engineer from listening to the crispy biscuit what Kilo was doing. Oh, okay. um, yeah, and just mess around on the turntables. Never really played out until Montreal. When I went out, that was when, that was like the next chapter, and that, that was really interesting because Montreal does have a very long history of kind of uh, just being uh, got got a hand on the pulse with uh, being close to the East Coast. A lot of people I end up meeting, they they had cousins in New York, and they kind of like caught everything that was bubbling up in the late late 70s uh, throughout the 80s so um yeah just really interesting stories um kind of tapped into that mm -hmm. when i moved to montreal and uh yeah opportunities came up um yeah the main one being um rock deep tuesdays that that was when i kind of made the connection between just loving like 90s hip-hop and the funk and soul and breaks that it sampled to playing or meeting a lot of street dancers hmm. um rock deep tuesdays was uh, a night that we started around 2000 and uh just all the all the montreal street dancers came out hmm. um yeah a lot of them were just like kids like underage and they, they came out and now they're yeah just People, uh, I'm gonna put people, people who are like some of the the, the better kind of world-renowned dancers out of Montreal. They 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 passed through, and the vibe was just incredible. Like some of the OGs came out, mm -hmm. they kind of laid the foundation, and the younger generation, like uh, Flow Rock Crew, was right. uh, a lot of them came out. There were like kind of contemporary dancers that came out, Rubber Dance, oh, really? Rubber Band Dance uh, yeah. Company. They they were doing all these like. It really interesting movements that I never seen, and that was uh, just yeah, that was eye opening. That was um, whereas when I listened to Crispy Biscuit, it was more you know, removed. It was just like yeah, a yeah, one way yeah. thing. This was the the start of being in a community mm -hmm. of like minded people. Um, we were we were feeding that scene. That at that time there was a lot of, I guess more commercial nice. But we 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 none of us involved with the project were really. Um, you like digging, digging for kind of more underground joints and playing stuff that people haven't heard, and uh, the mm -hmm. dancers appreciated that. It was like a breath of fresh air. There were a lot of successful commercial hip hop nights too, which uh, I, I I respect. People would do it. Uh, like a lot of my friends did it. Great DJs. The vibe's amazing. It's it's a little bit different. Like when when you play tracks that everyone knows, like mm -hmm. you can kind of take the energy a bit 
higher, you were kind of like your hands a little tied when when you set out to just break like underground music. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, we had a good five year run and people really liked it. Um, yeah, that, that that was amazing. And that was when I got tapped into. Yeah, I met all the dancers and start uh, met met Spicy and started doing like all the the bust the moves from the from the first one. Um, all the just a lot of b-boy and that was like uh, what I got started the, the style that I was exposed to first and then like uh, just meeting all kinds of lockers and poppers and just uh, yeah just chatting with them chopping up like like I, I'm not a dancer too so that that um, I it's a bit different uh, I know a lot of great street dance DJs uh, they, they're dancers themselves so they mm-hmm. they have a different kind of feel of the music um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, for me, it's just hanging out around people and seeing what what, what gets people amped and what people yeah. react to, yeah. um, and just slowly training my ear, um, and becoming a street dance DJ, and uh, that was like a good, yeah, fourteen, no, a good ten years. Yeah, wow. it was a good ten years. I pretty much played like every street dance event in Montreal of of any style, and. Uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> so uh, a lot of people, people I still connect with. So yeah, was this um, pre while you were still in university and before? Uh, I guess like the I, yeah. So I, I went out to Montreal. I I started started We Funk. Yeah, I started We Funk uh, first year university. It 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 uh, yeah, and I've been doing it since weekly. Right. Um, so that that is like kind of uh, burning in the background while everything right. else okay. is going on, okay. and uh, like uh, playing street dance events and all that stuff also influence what what, what kind of sound, sounds we bring onto We Funk, mm-hmm. uh, and then just getting feedback too, right? Like, um, yeah, it wasn't always like this. We we were uh, FM only college radio show. We started like doing the uh, uh, the terrible slot. It was a uh, four to seven in the morning before class. <laughs> oh, we had no, yeah, we didn't have the slightest idea of what where things would go. But like uh, we, me and my partner, Professor Groove, were were both. Um, yeah, we I guess we we kind of we have. Uh, we got in a groove and it, 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 it was something that we were passionate about even after all these years that we kept doing and just the the fact that we we pushed on year after year and it, uh, the 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 word of mouth spread and by to this day it, it, it's incredible what what the projects become like the feedback we get um just the scope uh, the geographic scope of people that listen a lot of street dancers, of course, um, they really appreciate the show, and we, we appreciate them too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we get a, a lot of street dance DJs. It, well, it's amazing. Like we've been around so long, like you don't you don't think about it like that. But we have had guests on that that it's kind of like similar to what uh, the crispy biscuit was to me, right? Um, guests come on, they're like, oh yeah, we got into DJing and, and the whole nine like because of We Funk. We weren't even doing anything like you guys inspired us to do it and now they do a guest mix and they're like they're they're, they're way better than i am like <laughs> selection like like everything and they they come back and they want to give back to the show uh technically just incredible and they're like wow that that, that that's that 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 feels good right like you you feel like you're kind of pushing the culture ahead mm-hmm. and uh yeah at the same time like inspiring people and making space for for others who are of the same mind Mm-hmm. Because um, what's interesting about We Funk is the it's a it's a it's a very it's a very underground kind of like me me and my partner have never had any kind of real commercial we <laughs> we've been on the internet a, a long time and uh, the just early like late 90s whatever people are like banner ads this that and, and the third we're like no we just we just want to uh have a community platform for good music hmm. all the hosting is donated like we have a lot of not not just street dancers listen obviously we have people like in 
in IT in the tech world like yeah. donated hosting big shout out to everyone who's mm-hmm. part of the project it is a labor of love like everyone pitches in and we have this kind of beautiful kind of weekly product as a result mm-hmm. um, yeah <laughs> yeah so that that's a little bit about uh, how we do we fuck yeah that's pretty amazing that you guys have done you said it's 25 years now or yeah 96 we started november and you guys have done it every week no no, no. We, we, we it's like even at a job you every year we, we're not that hardcore oh, okay, uh okay. we we take what a few weeks off christmas oh, okay, a few okay, okay. weeks off summer we, we do our whole thing but, but, but when you get at least 45 shows a year i think that's plenty yeah yeah <laughs> over over the span of so many years yep yeah that's that's still yeah like he's pretty amazing um and yeah it's crazy just thinking about uh like radio and you know radio used to be it's just in your kind of local area and then with the advent of the internet it just kind of like threw yeah to yeah the, we, to we the just whole world right we just caught that wave like unplanned and, and it, it, it <laughs> and we just like stuck with it and i still remember like maybe early 2000s we got added to the the itunes at that time was uh, the radio stream director and we funk we were listed at the top so that in, in a radio director say 100 uh, radio streams so that mm-hmm. got us uh, a fair bit of exposure and uh, we we started getting feedback from like Brazil, from Japan, South Africa, and we realize the scope of the project is not a local, <laughs> like uh, student-run FM show anymore in Montreal. Like we, we, uh, yeah, we <laughs> we're so tired. I remember uh, pushing because uh, remember my, my my I wanted to like a proper mix show, right? They had uh, so we we pushed. Uh, my two turntables and the flight case it's like a double flight case so like a coffin mm-hmm. uh, through the Montreal winter through like eight feet of snow on my bicycle me and my <laughs> buddy were like uh, were like pushing it uh, yeah <laughs> it's pretty crazy when I think back about it but it, it's, it's it's definitely a labor of love it's definitely I mean, we kind of put in a lot but we also got out a lot too yeah I, I just think like I don't know maybe this is my my personal experience or whatever but it was just kind of it's kind of interesting seeing the the flow of like what what's popular and stuff and like you know you had radio and then tv came along and that kind of like bumped out some of the popularity of radio and Mm -hmm. then the internet came along and that changed the game with just a whole bunch of things and now so suddenly not suddenly but like radio and audio stuff is kind of like made this big especially with say podcasts has made this right, big like right, return right. yeah to popularity sure. it's just kind of neat, interesting yeah and but you know we funk has been going strong this whole yeah time. which means like we yep <laughs> yeah so you guys are immune to yeah <laughs> we try to be we try to yeah it, it's, it's it, yes yes and no i think um Honestly, when when we started, we were like one of the one of the few radio stations available on the internet. So that that there's a, was a lot less competition back in the day, right? Like now, everyone and their moms got uh, a radio show. So it's mm-hmm. if if I think about what if, right? If we started now, it would be much harder to kind of have a build a community around our particular show right, and make right. a name for ourselves, right? And stand right. out. It would involve a lot more marketing which we do zero of <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah what, what surprises me still is just the the word of mouth nature of how how we funk spreads and uh it doesn't it's not like yeah we, we it's not like we our household names but uh, for the people who really appreciate it it means so much and that mm-hmm. it still blows my mind we, i have people hitting me up is like can we get a video shout out like uh my my husband listens to we funk like day and night want to like uh, just a shout out from you would mean so much i'm like of course yeah like, right like on, that, right that we live for that stuff right that's so cool and uh 
we've been blessed to play weddings of of, of listeners, and uh, yeah, that's amazing. Just just for people who want us to be a part of their the like the the big day, uh, celebrating just what, what, yeah, just everything they've built, and um, we feel like we have we're family beyond yeah beyond what we know because it's it, radio is, is interesting because it's a one way street a lot of people know us but we don't particularly we don't necessarily know them so when mm-hmm. we go to a wedding we like actually talk and meet a lot of the people they feel like they've known us for a lifetime they're like oh they remember like in this this year i talked just a little tidbits from my life that that leak onto the show we keep it pretty music focused mm-hmm. it's like oh yeah you you, you were sick in like uh, <laughs> 2006 and uh, i was like wow that that's that's crazy because it, it, that's it's, it's yeah people are tuned in and then and they have a glimpse into our lives for a long time and we're, we're, we're like the soundtrack to a lot of people as they go through the uh, trials and ups and downs of life a lot of people say it's really touching like we, we got us through all these dark periods it's like whatever fa- like family past we were in school it, it was it was a really trying period but you guys got us through it and, and that that's amazing too like when yeah. you get yeah. uh feedback like that and I, I think too like you know with the way it is now um because i guess when you guys first started out the internet was still kind of in its infancy or whatever and if you had it it was just on your Very computer much so or at, uh, at the school or mm-hmm. something like that. But nowadays, everyone's got their Right, phone. right, right. <laughs> they can take it anywhere they want. And it's like, yeah. you know, at any point mm-hmm. in time, you can you can be driving in your car, you could be at the gym, you could be in the library, you could be walking down the street, and you can still be enjoying this radio station. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I wanted to ask you a little more just about, like, DJing in general and just your... Right, right. I guess the more, like, the mentality, because... There's some people, sometimes you'll see it in, in like, I don't know, internet comments or some, you just hear people that maybe don't really have never gone to a club or don't really get like what the role of a DJ is. And some people think it's like, oh yeah, well, right, you just right. make a playlist and you push a button and like, that's it. Like, mm-hmm. That's not very hard. So yeah, I was wondering if you can get into some details of a bit more about like, well, what kind of just va- generally, what is it? What is a DJ? What is the role of a DJ? And like that kind of thing. Yeah, I think uh, it really depends on what kind of DJ you are. But overall, I think right. it's um, it's uh, part of it is uh, make yeah making people around you have a good time. And sometimes that means playing stuff that people know and recognize. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you hook people with that, and then you kind of sneak in some music at you education of something you know ever um so it's a balance it's it's not um it's yeah it's it's both like uh it's like I, i'm not so hardcore if it's say like a music a, a dj's got to just break new music all the time mm-hmm. because uh yeah like i said earlier the, the the if you play stuff that people know and recognize like the, there's a certain energy and uh kind of connection between you the crowd and among the crowd that that won't happen no matter how dope a new track that you play mm-hmm. i find anyways but um uh, we funk like my the bulk of my experience i would say is with as a radio dj like more so than even playing out uh mm-hmm. and that has its pros and cons i have uh i'm spoiled in a way i have complete free reign <laughs> To play whatever I like, um, whether or not it moves people, um, so that that is uh, that, that's one way to DJ. But I I don't I don't suggest like people starting out DJ like yeah. just not not read the crowd because ultimately you're if you're in a club setting especially like reading the crowd is um, is a big part of your art mm-hmm. uh, of what you do and uh, making connections between tracks like. Uh, what we are known for, I guess, is uh, just exposing the roots of uh, a lot of music that people might know through hip hop and R&B, because uh, so much of it is sample based, yeah. and more so. Well, there's a bit of a revival. Like in the '90s, 
it was just rampant, like sampling, sa- yeah, hip hop yeah. sampling, James Brown, what have you. But now you see a lot of new R and B sampling '90s R and B. So um, there is that that continuity that that you can bring as, as a DJ, especially to a younger audience who is curious but might not be exposed to what came before. Um, I have just so many songs in my head, <laughs> just having been in the game so long. I I kind of lay out a, a bit of a road road map for mm-hmm. people to to nerd out about music, kind of, and then they can fill in the, the blanks and kind of go online and do yeah. their own extra research. But uh, there's we have fun making like musical connections. I think mm-hmm. that's what a good DJ does. Supposedly, like you have honed your craft enough to know more about music than most people, and you can make that connection clear to people. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, uh, it's interesting because a lot of stuff that we talk about on this podcast is, um, well, maybe me personally is a lot of stuff about like just storytelling and, and say whatever that is, if it's dancing, if it's, if it's like you watch a movie, there's a, there's a certain flow and there's little things and you kind of mentioned it with music is like, you might hook someone with a song that they know and then right now you've got them and you can take them on this journey you you can kind of take them where you where you want mm-hmm. to go and, then, <laughs> and again like you said it depends on what kind of dj you are or or what kind of job you're doing that kind of thing um and i kind of want to get into that a little bit later but um sure yeah i always i always thought in my experience because my experience with DJs was either radio or yeah, at like a jam or something like that. And in particular, I like the, the ciphers and, and just the journey that people would take you on, the DJs mm-hmm. would take you on and, uh, knowing when was the right time to drop this track? When was the right time to do this? When was the right time to put on something that people weren't familiar with? Because, you know, it was, they were ready for it. They, they were already, listening to you you had their full attention that kind of thing and like yes yeah, right really right yeah then you can kind of kind of push the boundaries a little and test yeah. the crowd. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you yeah. can always kind of fall back on something <clears throat> safer it's a it's a very fluid kind of uh fluid kind of exercise i guess yeah um so you're yeah you said your most of your experience is with like radio djing right just because I've done it every yeah. week for 25 <laughs> yeah. years, like, even yeah. more so than playing out, I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah. What What would your What would you say is kind of like the big differences between, say, yeah, radio DJing and like playing for a club or say at a at a competition or something like that? Yeah. You. 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 The. The. You have. Uh, much more free uh, radio especially um, by now like we have built up a, a reputation so our, our fans are familiar with our format they, they trust our taste too right uh, when you have an audience that trusts your taste you can uh, you have a lot more leeway in uh, how how wide you cast your net of music so we we can there's no real like by now there's there's no real like core to the we funk sound i guess the core is kind of golden era hip hop and funk soul and breaks, but we, we've really evolved beyond that mm-hmm. um, because music keeps evolving and we're, we're not gonna <laughs> just keep playing the the same track we, we've kind of played when we started. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, we try to kind of pick from, we, we play music that resonate, that resonates with us. And, a lot of times it's stuff that kind of references or at least is in the lineage or pays homage to stuff that came earlier mm-hmm. um whether it, it be samples or yeah kind of production style and all that um yeah we 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 try to kind of lay out that that continuity like i said before um yeah. of music and where it's going i think that's a really interesting part about yeah maybe radio djs in particular radio djing because like you can kind of do that at say a club or a party you can 
sort of educate people, but it's just a little different, right? Because radio, uh, it's very different. You have it's, more time. Um, you have like, you can even get on the mic and just have those moments where you're, mm -hmm. you're talking about the track that just played or something like that. Give some background, right? Right. Some stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and the fact that you, I think the biggest difference is you can move people, but you don't have to move people. Mm. Like a lot of music can be can be more like low key like mm. head not music it can be just like making sunday brunch at home music <laughs> it's not all like hype high energy yeah. moving music body moving music yeah, that, that's you, the biggest difference. you mentioned that too before that like when you're when you're doing these things where there is an audience like a live audience or whatever a big right, part right. is reading the crowd right mm -hmm. yeah so can you can you go a little bit deeper on like just what what do you mean by like just reading the crowd what is that kind of mean exactly yeah it's like 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 looking over like well the laptop nowadays <laughs> because <laughs> um, i mostly play off serato looking over the laptop oh that's that's a that's a great tip like young djs just don't don't just stare at the screen <laughs> check out what's going on too uh, because it's easy to get like get in the zone you think you're in the zone but you're not in the zone <laughs> you're just in your zone <laughs> right 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 I've heard of the legendary Serato stare. The Serato stare, I haven't heard it. Uh, <laughs> phrase like that, but yeah. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's very interesting because sometimes like there's like one or two people, it, it's like, it's like mental like warfare. You like, you, you check the crowd, it's like it, the energy is slowly building and then you got you got like one or two people who are, who are with you and you got to work <laughs> them so that it catches like and then it becomes contagious like that little corner starts working uh, and then okay, uh okay. It, it it's oh man it's it's very it's not a science I, I it's just something i i guess i just do but by instinctually after all these years um yeah. and then the, yeah there's like a fall back on like I guess there's no shame saying it. Like you fall back on like a couple of like killer tracks that you don't work if right. things don't like aren't working the way you're you're expecting, mm -hmm. and then uh, it's like being yeah. Adaptable, but it's also right? yeah. It's it's also like you don't want to go high energy too much because like the the beauty of music and just like in life is contrast, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, you kind of build it up like really like rah rah tracks and then you smooth it out a little bit and then you kind of mm -hmm. build it back up um, just just so there's, it's not, yeah, there's there's some, um, it's more dynamic that way, right? Right, right, yeah. Um, yeah, the musical journey, reading the crowd, it's all, it's all <laughs> beautiful stuff, I think. I think it's and it's stuff that uh, really gets like overlooked a lot of times with when it comes to either DJing or what it, what it is that it, what makes a party what makes a good event that kind of thing and uh, yeah some people just like honestly think, it's yeah go ahead I feel like it's not really something you can teach that easily it's something mm -hmm. you you just gotta do trial and error mm -hmm. you gotta fall down and get back up and just learn it that way experience mm -hmm. like a, there's nothing like it right yeah well i think that's that's also really true like you hear it a lot with you know any i guess anything like creative you gotta have the the like mental fortitude to and and just guts to try something and see if it works and and if it right. fails to kind of like either know how to recover and sit and salvage it or just to be like you know uh handle your own ego and and come back to the drawing board and okay well why did that not work that something maybe i played it at the wrong time or something like that mm -hmm. yeah yeah but um in, in a way there's uh even though like my mind's always working when i'm playing out i i feel like djs have it a, a little bit easier because as a dancer, like every moment you're expressing yourself, right? Like I have a song's length to at least regroup if I need mm -hmm. that time true, to think true. like where to go next. Right. And then the, the song will hold. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, yeah which uh, <clears throat> it was something I thought about. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, I want to talk about um, 
you know, just Vancouver Street Dance Festival. So right, maybe right. we can start about start with um, just your your involvement in that whole right. thing and, and how it's been going and stuff like that. And it's uh, <laughs> it's, 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 it's almost ten years. It feels like a blur. Um, ten years. So I moved. Almost. To 20, to, 20, 12 was the first one um that's when jesse and and boris approached me that the, them knowing me from we funk and i i had just moved from montreal they were nice enough to to reach out they said uh uh we'd love to have you play this uh new festival that we're starting mm -hmm. um so that was the first year it was at robson attendance is decent but not like uh like uh, say five years in um and uh, after the first year, I joined the, the organizing team and have been with the, the festival since. Not not always playing, but I, I'm kind of like the, the backup DJ <laughs> there needs to be. But I, I, I think, um, yeah, just to keep it fresh, too, just uh, there's so many uh, like younger DJs, people who specialize in different things than myself that let's just keep it fresh, bringing a yeah. lot of it talent both from Vancouver and uh, and uh, abroad too. Like Vancouver's got a pretty sick scene of DJs organizing. The organizing team is small for the, the festival that you see uh, mm. either in like in the flesh there at Robson or just on social media. It's not the, the work is only really done by like seven, six, seven people. Yeah. And uh, we we're all volunteers. Um, it's another labor of love. Uh, we have we have kind of built up the yeah people have come and gone the the founders they they've they've moved on to different projects i think uh, jesse has left and boris has left but they uh left a really kind of really powerful idea um mm -hmm. that that the rest of the organizing team carried on which is so it's a, it's a couple of ideas one is celebrate the space uh, the uh, the space of street dance in vancouver which vancouver is really lucky to have because well we're, we're not like super cold we're not super hot it's an outdoor space without harassment like that fosters kind of uh, street dance and the street dance community people can just hang out they can jam they can they can dance they can play their music things have changed a little bit the last little while but yeah. um yeah Oof. robson yeah, hopefully mm -hmm. it'll, yes. it'll be resolved. But uh, for people yeah. who don't know, Robson is like this. It's like an outdoor skating rink that, for most of the year, is just like this concrete uh, <laughs> slab. There's no ice yeah. or anything, and Vancouver right. is, like you said, is really mild, so it attracts all kinds of dancers at this point, from like street dance to studio to ballroom to yeah, 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 all over the dance spectrum it's pretty amazing mm -hmm. um, and it sent me in close so in a rainy city like vancouver you can get out of the rain and still do yeah. your thing like most of the year which is amazing yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. um what is your your role specifically within the like organizing team who uh, most <laughs> is it like a multi, most of us multi yeah most of us just like like it's like a well that's a bad metaphor. I was going to say a, a sinking ship. You plug whatever hole like it comes up, <laughs> but it, it's not that bad. It's not that I'm being dramatic, um, but we, we, we don't have strict roles. We have um, we're a pretty loose team of committed people who will jump on whatever needs to be done. Like, uh, but I, I do kind of most of the music programming, I guess you can say either like kind of reaching out to because I, I have a pretty big network of DJs mm -hmm. that I know and uh, I can reach out to them. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, I'm a bit of a Montreal liaison because uh, I know so many, so many of the dancers. So uh, just uh, over the years brought out a, a lot of friends out from Montreal to get involved with the festival. Mm -hmm. I uh, I'm also a CPA by day, so I, I do all the the accounting and bookkeeping, all the finances I handle wow. for the festival. And uh, that's a big job. Yeah, the finance component of grant writing and stuff, generating right. all the <laughs> endless uh, documents. <laughs> that, that <laughs> you have to, I guess, all the hoops you got to jump. Uh, yeah. But yeah, less 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 uh, less less on the social media. I just. Yeah, just like the older I get, the the less I have energy. To... <laughs> but 
pose. It's it's a bit of um. It's interesting. I I I I, I find it, it is. Yeah, keep it like a hundred. It's not easy to post something and just like say, "Oh, this is gonna be the greatest thing ever." After you've been doing it like twenty five years, and you know it's it's something you're involved with, you're you're happy about, but just it just saps me to like just market the, uh, <laughs> the way things need need to be marketed. Right? It's like this yeah. is the best jam ever. Yeah, You'll yeah. never experience it. I've I've experienced a few jams like this. <laughs> it's probably won't be the best jam ever, except Vancouver Street Dance Festival proper is that 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 is I can honestly say um, some of the just the craziest like times at a jam that you'll experience well, I uh, think, in anywhere yeah i think like maybe with regards to say like street like dance events street dance events it's one of the not to say it's the only thing like that but it's one of the rare kind of like styles of doing a street dance event where yeah the focus is a lot more on like community and the the music like enjoying the music and just that that feeling that everyone gets with dance like that pure feeling it is hearing the music and you just let go and it doesn't matter who you are uh whether you're a dancer a locker a popper a b-boy B-girl, or the general or public or the general public like, yeah that, really that's the main matter. thing yep. yeah because i think that's there, such a beautiful thing yeah there's uh, there uh, you and i both know that like there's tons of jams that are for the community by the community and you have the same whatever hundred to like a thousand people going to the same jams it's a very kind of it's a very close scene right but um i guess that the idea of behind the festival from day one is there is a lot of talent and people put in just endless hours of practice training to to do their thing practice their their craft at a high level but it's it's uh all that is uh kept in this little community and uh we want to kind of highlight it and spotlight it show show it off to the general public because um it's uh the the, the energy is amazing and the the it's it's just um it's something that the 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 public's hungry for it but they don't know enough about it to search it out necessarily even mm-hmm. though it's it's easier on the internet now uh but the feedback we get is just from from families who come down from grandparents little toddlers and they they and when they come down and talk to us organizers it's uh yeah the people it's it really touches people in, in a way that yeah they, they 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 just it's there's very few events like it it's not like a regular street dance event because we do try to keep it uh, more public friendly. We, we, mm-hmm. It's not so heavily uh, focused on, on competition either, yeah. even though yeah. the battle is the highlight. Uh, yeah. It's about building community and uh, just having fun. It's like, yeah, peace, love, unity, and having fun. It, 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 it kind of comes back to those kind of foundational values. Mm-hmm. Um, and the battle is a big part of it, but we celebrate the the culture and the music and we want to make sure people have a good time we bring in uh, dope djs with bands with showcases we have like uh like uh, table tutors come through and they yeah. they do their thing like it's a different uh elements of kind of the extended hip-hop culture that uh, people might not have exposure to and we try to represent it in a in a proper light by people who do it and have uh, proper grounding in the foundations and uh, invite people from around the world who also do or on the same like mm-hmm. on the same mind wavelength yeah um so, yeah one of the things that always stuck with me that whenever i would go um it's like after the battles are done usually it's like they have one sort of the final one and then the jam is sort of finished quote unquote Right, right. But every time I've been there and after it's finished, it's not really finished. Like That's the best part. Yeah. Yeah, right. And it's like <laughs> it's such a rare thing maybe from my perspective of coming from like breaking battles where it's like Yeah, because it done. just 
All right, it's done. <laughs> People will Clears chat, out. stick around and chat. But like, at Vancouver Street Dance Festival, it finishes, and then people who some people leave and then but there's a lot of just general public people who just yep. come down and they start to get involved into the yeah 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 the little circles <laughs> or it's not even like ciphers and thing quote unquote like circles yeah. and stuff some people do that and they're having fun doing that and other people are just dancing and like you know robson yep. has its big uh like hustle scene too and right. people are doing their thing there and it's mm-hmm. just a really beautiful thing to even just sit back and if you don't even want to dance, you just sit back and like watch the so enjoy the vibe. The vibe, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it's really amazing, like what uh, the the event like, and it's a credit to all the organizers and the people that make it run. Um, that you've create, you guys, you've all created this uh, this sort of atmosphere, this welcoming atmosphere, which I think is so key to like dance getting pushed to that next level is like involving other people that are outside of this little bubble that is dance right right so it doesn't stagnate like it's yeah or it becomes too yeah too kind of yeah just just uh you're in your own world yeah. um but it, like it, what the the props you give to the festival a lot of it is uh, it, it's a reflection it's a mirror it's holding up a mirror to the Vancouver street dance kind of scene too, right? Mm-hmm. I think uh, like a, yeah, anyone who's passed passed through, like Vancouver has a very welcoming scene, uh, which is uh, which is actually an interesting contrast when I came out here from Montreal because I <laughs> I didn't see any like fire in the battles. <laughs> Everyone's too nice. Vancouver, like an apologetic, right? yeah. I wasn't <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. I I didn't know what to think, and yeah. but I I I realized that that is kind of the what Vancouver has to give, and that that's the what makes Vancouver special. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I, you you hear it a lot with just yeah people who've been to different scenes, lived in different cities, and right. uh, and it's kind of like there's you know there's pluses and minuses there's pros and cons to each kind of thing but it's really just like what kind of, of what kind of uh atmosphere do you want out of out of an event out of a community and that kind of thing like because mm-hmm. competitions can be really great and they can they can fire people up to right to compete and elevate and create new things and all this stuff but uh to me and yeah, it's my Vancouver bias of just growing up in Vancouver and being a part of that scene. No doubt, no but doubt. But like, I have so much more fun at an event like that because I can, it's the kind of event where my parents can come and they mm-hmm. can enjoy what they're seeing. Like, yeah. I think the last one that I went to, my mom and dad and like some of their friends came and they were like sitting almost in front row and I could see my mom cheering for, like she doesn't know any of these people, but she's yeah. having a great time. And like, <laughs> that's what that's to me that's like what you would want out of a, an event is for people to be able to no, come agree 100 never who have never seen this stuff or just like they're not a dancer they're not in the community necessarily yep. but they become a part of the community f- at least for that event mm-hmm. yeah and I, again it's a really beautiful thing yeah no and, doubt. and the space that it's at is so perfect because it's right in the middle of downtown. It's in a public space where people are even just passing through. And it's just like, you really get a sense of the vibe of like, it just feels good. It's like summertime. Usually it's nice weather. And, yeah, we've, uh, we've never been rained out, like <laughs> knock on wood. And yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, since year one. So yeah, but and it's, it's a, a yeah. it's a it's a busy weekend too. Like uh, a lot mm. of things are popping off. Like uh, Pride weekend, um, oh, BC right. day long weekend. There's mm-hmm. the fireworks before COVID. Um, yeah. yeah. So the the it's probably the we ha- Vancouver probably gets the most tourists that weekend of any weekend in the year. So it, it's a good way to kind of showcase what Vancouver is all about. Because um, mm. also like moving here. I'm also older now, but moving here from Montreal, like I feel like the city had a lot more kind of street life and and culture to offer on a day to day, like any given day, and Vancouver was was more kind of about the nature, kind of appreciating mm-hmm. the nature, but um, 
yeah, Vancouver kind of uh, breaks that kind of breaks that stereotype a little bit, or yeah, <laughs> yeah, Vancouver yeah, Street sure. Dance Festival, sure. uh, the, like a lively social event in the middle of the city mm-hmm. that uh, that's that packs up the, the the downtown plaza, got loud music, and, <laughs> and then everyone's having a good time. <laughs> and it's something that the city needs too. It is. It opinion, is. You know, and I think it's really telling that. Uh, I, from a competitor standpoint, as far as like the battles go, like there's a couple of things here. But first thing is like you, the the event. There's no, as far as I know, there's no like prize money, right? It's not like you yeah, win, that, you, that, get, we, you get like ten thousand dollars or something like that. No, no, nothing no, nothing like that, right? It's kind of in line with our well, part is in line with our philosophy a little bit in, in terms of like this is uh yeah we're 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 trying to we're yeah, dude, we're, we're just there to have fun. We're, it's not mm-hmm. so much about the prize money and the mm-hmm. other is just the practicality. We're, we're not like loaded. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we don't exactly. charge. We don't charge. It's a free event in, it's, yeah. in, in downtown Vancouver with like 10,000 people. Like there's a lot of the costs go into it. So, yeah, but but even without like any cash incentive or, you know, flight to some you know, a random event or whatever, you right? still get lots of people from. Yeah all over the place coming out to this event because and especially yeah now after it's been going for almost 10 years like you have these people that have heard about the event they've heard about the vibe they've heard about you know, the atmosphere and just what it's like to go there. and they want to go regardless of any monetary compensation like they're technically losing money which is what most competitors do when they travel these things anyway right right but this is like they're they're consciously going into it like I'm not going to win anything. I'm not. I, what I'm going to get out of it is an amazing time and with yep. an amazing community and, and connecting with all these people. And uh, yeah, that's that's <laughs> that's all we could ask for. That that's yeah. that's what we set out to do. And then, especially the last few years, as the the festival grew, um, yeah, I've, I've been noticing just talking to people between like when I'm not busy, uh, how how far and wide people come from. Like definitely a fair bit a, a really like wide spread from around north america less a little less so europe but there's a, a bit of asia mm-hmm. but um just yeah people from pe- talking to people they 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 heard about it they 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 fly themselves out they sometimes they compete sometimes they just come to hang out uh because they know it, it's uh it's an amazing weekend of of community and dance and just uh, yeah, there's very very little I I, I know that's that's like it, and um, yeah, I'm pretty proud of it. <laughs> Along with the whole team. Yeah, yeah but even because um, it's a two day event, right? You have the prelims before for the competitors and stuff. But yeah, even, so uh, it's even that yeah. is yeah. like has this party atmosphere at this point. It's become this thing where people the dancers even though it's for the dancers, like it still has the same atmosphere now. Yeah. In a way it's more raw. It's like a, a summertime, like block party because, yeah, uh, yeah. because I uh, think, uh, thank, thank a lot to the space we're in, right? Boogaloo mm-hmm. Academy. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been collaborating, partnering with them for a long time. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, the just being, because Vancouver is highly gentrified to be outside of the downtown core in this kind of semi-industrial space where you can make noise, you can have crowds without the police busting it up. Yeah. Um, you can, yeah, just kind of, we're free to do what we do. We, we set out floors outside, we have rooms inside, we have a yeah. loud sound system uh, going in a couple of rooms. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, actually, I really like the prelims, and the prelims is more for the the, uh, the it's like uh, for people in the community, but uh, out but of town is really. I even enjoy saw that. a little bit of because you know you get some young competitors or right, right, in studios, and the, their families come like maybe. Oh, there's come. a lot of right. And so yeah, I started seeing that, and I thought, you know, there's even families starting to come to the prelims and they're having so a it's a time. nice progression because it's so yeah, yeah. normally we kind of like well, well honestly like prelims at one point was let's go, go through the motions so we can get the the, the finalists right because yeah. prelims have battles in general tend to drag out and yeah. i've dj'd a lot of them i've given like eight hours of my life to them <laughs> each time um 
it's not always fun, but the prelims, they, we, we keep it moving. We manage to yeah, have yeah. Um, a pretty fun, like, like f having food helps and having kind of interesting community <clears throat> vendors help. Um, but yeah, prelims are fun, especially yeah. the outside area. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and the outside too. It's like, if you, if you just walk through, like there's people dancing inside, there's some people dancing outside, but a lot of it is just people hanging out and just chilling. Yeah. Like, I think that's a great thing to have that people need to focus more on at, at events. It's like, remember that it's also a social thing. That like, right. yeah, it's like yep. I'm dancing and watch me dance and stuff like that. But it's also a community thing. It's also just meeting new people. It's about all of that together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think that's kind of like the main stuff that I wanted to chat with you about, but there's a few things. Yeah. A few other things maybe that, uh, we'll get to. So last things, what are some of the, as a, as a taste maker with music, what are some of the tracks that you've been really feeling these days that you want people to know about? Oh man, that's hard. That's that's my least favorite question, because um, no, no, it's it's kind of like almost uh, like in line with like top five MC, top five right, current right, tracks. Right, right. Because I go through so much music. True, true, true. It's um, it's hard. I can name some like kind of new generation artists that I'm feeling, and like that, right that at the, especially at this moment, I, mean, I guess at this very moment. Even though she hasn't got anything out recently, but Rhapsody is is my number one artist, okay. like uh, of any genre right now. Like of she's killing genre. the game. <laughs> she's um yeah right now, just uh just the, the the mix of her 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 energy her the, the what she spits about like her balance of conscious versus like fun. Um, it's amazing what she's done and uh yeah she's just to make a lane for herself in a very kind of male dominated uh field right and in, in hip hop and she she's not watering down nothing she's not like uh she's not playing like certain cars to uh yeah just get herself ahead um mm -hmm. she's just raw and fierce on the mic um rhapsody i love um what else am i feeling Oh man, that that's a hard one because I, I it's like water, music to me is like water off the <laughs> duck's back. It just like it just constantly coming right, and right, flowing right, and right. coming and flowing. I, I'm just I, immersed in it. Yeah, and even just just that little conversation just made, reminded me of this one thing that I wanted to ask you about. Is right, like, right. Um, you know, like you're a music lover, and a lot of people that listen to We Funk are are music lovers or music nerds or whatever you want right, to say. Right. But uh, like, do you think there's something too about, we've talked about this sometimes with like the mystery surrounding whatever it is. Like, so with, with breaking, there was in the early days, there was, you didn't know everything. You didn't know everyone. There were surprises. You didn't, you, uh, there was some like mis mystery and mystique to certain people. Like you didn't know everything about it. YouTube era came around, you could watch any of the footage, you can see everything. Now, like before, yeah, it was like what the D, the radio DJ played and that's what you would hear. Or if you went to the event, that's what you would hear. And now people can like Google anything, they can Shazam, whatever they want. And, like they know, people can know everything. But do you think there's anything like to be said about like sort of ignorance is bliss, like if, to not knowing everything, not knowing stuff. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's a pretty heavy question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow, just that, something that like almost... clicked in my head recently, just in the conversation that I wanted to get your opinion on. Well, like, like my well, like the music that I know is just a, like a little pond of music, and, and like every day, pretty much, I discover new music. So, so there's a great unknown and mystery out there, and. Um, the way I look for music is not necessarily, uh, it's really, ultimately it's what resonates with me as, as 
as me without even consideration of what we funk fan like and what any any of that ultimately starts with me if i'm feeling it then it gets added to my crates um um yeah i don't i yeah i don't know if that kind of answers no it doesn't answer the question <laughs> you say there's something well, like uh, <laughs> like i'm just thinking so as a dancer right when when uh when a dj plays something or if i'm at a battle yeah when the dj plays a certain song you know you can ha- you can have those tracks that everyone knows and everyone loves yeah and, yeah and uh and that's great but when those those brand new tracks that yeah you you you've never heard yeah like when those come on it's like this magical moment of like oh, what is this yeah Holy yeah of shit. course like, what is this kind of what is this track? right and like um maybe i'm not even really asking a question it's more just a comment <laughs> no no I mean? but i i feel but you, you know I mean? like I, but I, I'm living in a constant flow of that, that discovery mm. and that, that exploring the mystery of what I don't know, right? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, um, it kind of ties in with what you're saying. And, and, and so digging for new music, like it, it's crazy because outside of like people like DJs and dancers, maybe like other friends I grew up with, they stop listening to new music. They, they they remember their high school tracks, and that's it, right? right. It's uh, people. It's not the part of the rhythm of a, a lot of kind of lives to to discover new music or, or things come up, of course, right? Like uh, job, family, people yeah. get busy. Mm-hmm. Um, this, that's why music discovery is uh, is something that a lot of people. Well, I did when I was young. I, I imagine young people still do today, right? It's because you have that freedom, you have that curiosity. And to be a DJ, you, I, I'm lucky to be able to maintain that kind of fire, that, that the, the, the journey that, that was set, like rolling, the, the, what, 30, I don't know how long I've been DJing, uh, 92-ish I started. Yeah, almost 30 years of, of journey of playing music. Um, and the fire's still there, that's why I, I wouldn't do anything if I didn't love it. Um, it's like a slow burn kind of love, like a marriage. It's not like <laughs> second super excited. <laughs> well, you, you, you um, find but, new ways of uh, reinventing, yeah, reinventing, the, the yeah, reinventing stuff. because yeah, ultimately we are we hold up a mirror to like uh, what creators are putting out um, musically. Like that, mm-hmm. that's why we we. Yeah, unless we do a terrible job, we can never get stale. Like because people are so creative and they're they, mm-hmm. they're they're pushing forward while like kind of referencing the past, and um, <clears throat> like we we found changed a lot too. Like we our sound used to be a lot harder. Even I think it's like strictly for like no R and B, like strictly for the the B boys, and but we, we've like we've we've branched out a lot. I think uh, that 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 has served us well, and that that that's uh, made us more well rounded as a yeah. as a radio show too. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, I, I just I grown up. It was like uh, there's no crossover like uh, like EPMD like that track. That was like my my bible. It's like forget <laughs> all that other noise because I don't listen to that. But uh, and then at the end, as you get older, it's like music's good music, it's good music, and you, yeah, you yeah. start opening your mind to to different mm-hmm. things too, right? Yeah, and and also the yeah, stuff goes in goes in cycles too. Like something oh, will get oh. really popular, and then maybe just fade, even though it's still a good song or something. It just you don't hear it as much, and then for whatever reason, like I don't know, ten years later, someone starts yeah. playing it again, and it just becomes like mm-hmm. it'll have that same effect i guess or a similar right, effect, right. you know yeah or like yeah like 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 like, like if uh something sampled and then that, can, yeah. Uh, yeah yeah it's uh like like kanye like at his sampling peak like brought back so many like really revived the interest in in uh, funk soul samples because he could he could afford it <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, to have like a major label digger, like either you're like so unknown, you're off the radar, you don't have to worry about clearance, uh, or you're, if you're in the middle, you're kind of you're, you're out of luck. But if you're like high profile and you get the label, will pay for everything, clear it. 
then you have a lot more room to play with. <laughs> yeah, true. true and true. that's how what brings back uh, kind of old tracks. And uh, I, I, I love that about music, though. I love yeah, that about music. for sure. Well, yeah, a lot of things are just inspiration is, is cyclical, too. It's like it'll mm-hmm. go back and then it gets reinvented in this new time. And then, you know, this new thing will go some direction and then other people will get bored of that and then go back into something or find some other inspiration from somewhere yeah mm-hmm. it's all everything it's like cycles and cycles and cycles um but i think yeah we're, we're gonna cut it there for now and there's a lot more that we could talk about but uh hey save it for next time save it for next time exactly right <laughs> um static thank you so much for just taking the time and, and sharing your your history and your your thoughts on things and just yeah it was hey, really no cool problem at all hearing all that stuff about we funk and, and and just your your journey through this um really appreciate but, do you have any if do you have anything that you want to just say to the people watching listening <laughs> before we head off shameless plug i guess as i always do <laughs> tune <laughs> yeah. into uh yeah we funk radio.com uh, we got mobile apps. We're on TuneIn Radio. We're available as podcasts. Uh, yeah, just many uh, mixed cloud. Yeah, uh, search us out. <laughs> We're all over the place. We got to <laughs> change with the times. We got got tentacles everywhere, <laughs> um, like an octopus. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, see if you like it. If you do, it can be a nice soundtrack as you get through your day. And, yeah, for sure. Uh, if you're a street good. dancer, you you would love it. Um, and uh, if you're in Vancouver, Vancouver Street Dance Festival 2022 is uh, when we're hoping to come back strong. We're going to call it our 10-year anniversary because it is 10-year, yeah. Even though we, it's, the count's kind of off with, with COVID, <laughs> but nobody cares. Yeah, yeah. We all it's understand. the 10-year anniversary, 2022. Come to Robson Square, BC Day Long Weekend, and uh, yeah, we're going to have a good time. I'll try and come out for that. Yeah, you got to you got to come back, man. You you yeah. were you were on the organizing team. So, <laughs> I, see, yeah. I should interview you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but again, thank you so much. Thank you of every, course. Thank you everybody for watching and listening. Really appreciate it and we'll catch you all in the next one. Peace. Peace.